If I were to say that I don't know how games media keeps on getting worse, I would be lying because basically, I do know, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. You are being failed by corporations within games media, and it sucks. There's a few stories that are going on today. Here's the most shocking one, though. This viral thread that appeared from Jake Ward over on X. An AI-focused content creator was boasting about how he automated the process of manipulating Google search engine tools into, uh, well, his own success. They did this by actively stealing a list of pages and topics from a competitor. Editor, then flooding the internet with AI trash articles based on stolen titles, and they then grew their site to having 490,000 visitors every month, with a total of 3.6 million visitors uh, by doing this. And it's not just even the sort of random, uh, you know, AI kind of bros on X who are doing this. No, Futurism investigated reports this week alleging that Sports Illustrated has had fake authors writing fake articles, and then when Sports Illustrated were challenged, they just went and deleted everything. So this, folks, is the internet that we exist on. It is one that does not value or reward useful media in any way at scale, that scale being the real operator, the important word there. Instead, everything seems to be for these larger companies about manipulation of search algorithms and structure in order to survive in a world where you have ad revenue, you have audiences, and funnily enough, even we feel that while this channel has had one or two record months recently, we have not had record revenue because our ad rates have absolutely slammed into the floor, which is likely why you are seeing more weirdness and desperation because this is happening across media. And if you'd like to pay our bills, well, here is today's sponsor. Ground on news forward slash Baudular revolutionize how you get your news and support our channel. My link will get you 30% off their Vantage plan. Now, Ground ingests over 50,000 articles a day. It organizes them by story and it breaks them down based on how many sources are reporting in each topic, along with political bias, the ownership of the various different outlets, and that lets you quickly compare all of the different headlines from across the political spectrum and then learn what is actually going on. Now, here's an example of how powerful the blind spot feature is. 0% of the right have covered this report that found a combination of climate impacts and energy prices have driven a £605 a year increase in how much food is costing, right, in the UK. Okay, that's about 5-ish percent of a median wage. That's noticeable to all of us, and right now, 0% coverage on the right. So if you were reading more right-leaning sources, you wouldn't even know about this. And also, if this report would benefit from some right-leaning scrutiny, that's not happening, and you now know it's not happening. That is just how Ground helps you actually know what's going on. I also love Ground for getting a feed that contains what's going on in a way that's free from the selective coverage bias, right? You get everything that's going on on with both local and national news. As an example, lately, I've been getting caught up with what's going on in the US election because it's going to be a relevant thing. I haven't really been paying much attention to it, but with ground, I've been able to work out essentially what's actually going on. And that's just where seeing coverage from across the spectrum in one place is unbelievably valuable. Ground News is more important than ever in this modern, crazy-ass world, so you can get 30% off a Vantage plan at ground.news forward slash Bellular. So you may have thought that's it, but oh no, 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 it does in fact get better, because on November 27th, 2023, GameIndustry.biz broke the news that ReadPop, they actually want to sell the Gamer Network Group and are exploring options. Now you may think, Gamer Network Group, what's that? Doesn't matter to me, never heard of it. Well, that includes sites like Rock Paper Shotgun, Eurogamer, VG247, and GameIndustry.biz. They also do have investments in some related groups like Digital Foundry. Of course, we do love the Digital Foundry boys, so bad news is, is not the sort of thing that we want. And they also provide uh, advertising services to the likes of VGC and some other sites. Pretty crazy. They say that ReadPop, part of RX, has reviewed its UK businesses and decided to investigate the potential sale of its gamers network and associated editorial digital properties. And they believe that new ownership offers the best conditions for growth of the business. And uh, really, the last sentence there is the important one because it's not really 
really about things such as providing a better service to the audience or maybe giving these uh, sites a chance to do the best work possible in a way that is sustainable. Uh, no, it is about growing the business. I always remember that Waypoint, which was kind of like the more membership thing. I suppose a bit like what we do at um, bellier.ghost.io that, um, that Waypoint was doing, which was Vice's gaming vertical. And from what we were led to believe, like, that was, like, healthy. It was fine. It, it, it was even growing. But the point was, line go up, but not fast enough. Therefore, die. Welcome to the corporate world. As the internet basically is collapsing as a system where money is made, every old model of revenue is absolutely struggling. We're seeing that on our content, and you are seeing that across all of these different topics, and that's what we're really going to get into today. Number one, things were actually never that great anyway, because there never really has been that much money in video games journalism. Uh, not really for the owners, and certainly not for the people doing work on the sites. 15 years ago, right, if you wanted to make money as the owner of a games press outlet, you were basically just trying to get as many views as possible by trying to target as much of the audience as possible to get as many eyeballs and advertisements as well as possible. This is how the internet works with Google AdWords and all of that stuff, and to a certain degree, it still does work like that. And this is, of course, why many websites at the time were devoting a curiously large amount of page space to galleries. You know, galleries of, say, cosplayers um, at gaming conventions so that everybody could only appreciate the incredible art and craft of them um, of what they were doing ah 15 years ago what a time uh, but yes that was a lot of clicks on individual pages you know every time you click to the next cosplay picture in the gallery some more advertising revenue happens but even then right you could pay for some investigative journalism or maybe a big expose as a result of the funding that you got from your strange galleries, your listicles, and of course, your guides. And guides specifically over the last 10 years, you really will have noticed, like all the sites have an absolute guide farm going on. After that, we then had Facebook destroying the internet as well as their uh, fun pivot into video that, um, well, kind of helped to demolish a whole bunch of sites. That's a whole story. We won't really get into it. Uh, but here's the thing, algorithms specifically, Google's one, search engine optimization. If you want something, you search for it. Um, and basically, nowhere do you see this more than guides. And basically, you see those guide articles like Destiny 2, this is what the vendor sells this week. Those are what actually keep the lights on for loads and loads of these outlets. Let's take a look then at some SEO in action. Uh, is Star Citizen on Steam? Don't really know if many of us were asking that question, but the core principles here are just to ensure that a page gets indexed by Google and then it gets placed highly in rankings, meaning uh, that, you know, it does a good job in having a certain amount of keyword density, but not too much keyword density or else it could look suspicious to Google, having internal cross-links, having a relatively high word count and a whole bunch of things like that. You know, those articles you go on to and you're like, why have you summarized the game? Why have you done? And the whole thing is a bloated absolute mess that, funny enough, feels like it could have been written by an AI. Um, so the answer to the question of, uh, in this case, uh, is Star Citizen on Steam? No is the answer. Um, you don't actually find that out until halfway down the page. And of course, you know those Google people ask? Probably optimized to appear in some sort of shelf on Google search like that. And of course, heaven forbid you actually load one of these sites on, you know, a mobile phone where you'll probably find multiple pop-up adverts, a video playing somewhere that probably gets in the way of site controls and various different forms of literal hell. And this is, of course, why the whole saved you a click uh, profiles on like X exist, right? You know, pithily summing up uh, whole articles in, you know, one tweet or something like that. And as much as sometimes those really do make some of the people who work in those sites kind of angry, you do have to understand understand that ultimately it's not really the fault of that X account. It's not really the fault of the people who use it. It's not even the fault of the journalists who basically are for their job assigned to do this stuff. It kind of is the fault of the systems that are driving all of this behavior. Ultimately, it is a bit of a game design problem, isn't it? So that's what's going on, but let's level it up a little bit and truly dive into how loopy it all is. So here is uh, somebody saying, thanks so much for taking our work. Google going the saved you a click route is so frustrating, especially on guides. And you can see here, right? Generative AI is experimental. Info quality may vary. Learn more. In Cyberpunk 2077, the player must decide early in the main campaign whether 
rather decide with Dexter, Deshaun, or Evelyn Parker. This decision doesn't have much impact, and it just you know, goes into a whole bunch of stuff. And what this is, basically, is the AI slurping up a whole bunch of things. In this case, seemingly from these different sources. Now, this is a really hilarious thing that's going on, because this is Google's own AI in a way kind of hurting itself and everyone else in the process. As Alex Donaldson says, uh, the funniest thing about this extremely grim and fucked up development is how Google's AI answer is probably more concise, clear, and useful uh, to the user than a lot of websites because they have to be more wordy and pad in order to rank and fulfill the SEO requirements for Google. So what he's getting at there is a lot of the way that people have got to write articles online is based on what actually works for Google. And that means that Google's AI that summarizes and strips away all of the specifically for SEO bullshit, that means their AI will be giving a better version of this. But here's where it actually gets kind of weird because if users just click on the AI thing, you don't get any ad revenue, right? And this is actually where it gets kind of weird because Google may very well be running the advertisements on a whole bunch of these sites that are being scraped by the AI that um, basically the Google AI then, um, you know, sort of circumvents the need to go and visit those sites. So this is quite interesting. It's a bit like how there's been some generative AI experiments on, um, of course, on YouTube, where maybe Google would be uh, providing some summaries of videos. And that's the sort of thing where, from my perspective, it could be quite destructive because number one, it turns it into an inherent more extractive experience. Uh, number two, I have seen just about no example of those video summaries that even approaches doing a decent job of the totality of a video, which itself will be, you know, maybe 2,000 words, two and a half thousand words, and also will have storytelling elements that the AI cannot parse right now, like how cuts are made, what people are speaking sometimes, things like that. So this is one of those strange things where to me it feels like everyone is chasing AI market share. But in the process of chasing AI market share, we are perhaps um, smashing up a whole bunch of things and not necessarily thinking about the consequences. Ultimately then we get to the tension of things where content that is good does not necessarily make money and it's got to exist within the context of an optimized website that keeps ticking on. A great example, most of the videos on this channel, not this one, um, they are what we internally call a roundup because they have multiple news stories. This video, however, this is a report um, because it's one topic. Now, here's the really interesting thing. Whenever we try to market a roundup and we even mention two or three topics in the video title, way fewer people click. And then because less people click, because, hey, the more you know, the more reasons you could have to not click or maybe... And, you know, because it is literally more words, your eyes will go to like a four word title somewhere else on the website. But whatever it is, YouTube basically pummels our video into existence, um, which is actually one of the reasons why over on our membership platform at bellier.ghost.io, um, we, you know, we, we don't do any of our titles like that. Our videos go up early, our full doc, everything goes up early because we just want to give you the best experience. But here we've got to jump through the hoops. And that kind of is, uh, it is the trouble. So if you've been frustrated by YouTubers with titles and thumbnails, which by the way, as somebody who is literally involved in doing those, um, they frustrate me. It's the worst part of my job, but also I have a responsibility to pay people's wages. And frankly, I would not be able to afford our current team if um, I did not play the game. It is as simple as that. And uh, this is the sort of thing that over in the sort of text media space, you basically see the same shit happen, but there's a difference. Here, this is, you know, this is the result of multiple team members and ultimately is presented in a video format where we control more of the experience, where it's not purely just about information. It is about the flow of the video. It is about knowing, oh, there's that dickhead in the internet, and I know if I click in his channel, uh, every day, I'll get some things and I can listen to them on my walk, right? That's the kind of value that's going on. So inherently here in the platform of YouTube, we are so much more insulated against this utter AI hellscape than it is for our colleagues over um, in, in just pure text. And that's challenging because even before any of this, you really did have the problem of criticisms and reviews barely make any money investigative reports barely make any money, right? None of that makes any money as compared to doing guides and news. Uh, but of course, a lot of us in our heads, we would say that we value 
the investigative reports and the reviews more than anything else. But the economics absolutely do not back that up unless you are able to have a direct fan funding model, as we see with, as an example, what we're doing, what Easy Allies are doing, what Second Wind is doing. Of course, that's Yahtzee and all the people who have left The Escapist right? These direct fan funding models actually allow for the things that we all say we actually value to actually be valued, as opposed to this big SEO-driven nightmare hellscape. Because the problem is, you can probably be sort of sustainable on, uh, you know, on, on having a mix of the investigative journalism and doing the sort of nasty things, but also doing some good reviews. But the problem is, let's say you are Gamers Network. And of course, if you're not aware who Gamers Network are, they are, of course, the fine, fine folks who own many different gaming websites. I believe that had included Destructoid, which had a whole bunch of layoffs. Also, I believe uh, The Escapist. Basically, Gamers Network have been really bad news everywhere they have went. And yeah, they um, th they did acquire a whole bunch of games uh, outlets over the last while. Because the problem is, if all you want is growth, what are you going to do? You're going to, in a way, 80-20 principle that stuff. And what you're, that's going to mean is you're going to be saying, okay, so you are spending 30 hours or 20 hours on a game review. In that same amount of time, you could have put out X different news stories or why different guides. And that will be that many more pages ranking an SEO for that many more things because ultimately it is an SEO game. If you guys think that a lot of um, a lot of stuff comes from somebody saying, I want to know what's going on in the gaming news. I know what I'll do. I'll go to website.com and I'll read the news. You know, just like I'm uh, reading uh, the, the, the Telegraph or The Economist or The Guardian or The Observer or, you know, something like that. Like you're reading an old newspaper. No, it's almost all coming from Google. And that is why it's all guides and stuff. Because you look and it would be like you, um, you know, going uh, and looking at the front page of the newspaper and finding that it's full of guides. And you're saying, who the hell is going to pick up this newspaper and read these guides? But that's the problem. If you think about a modern gaming news website, in that way, in that uh, understanding that we have of what a press outlet is, completely wrong. I mean, it should be right, and I wish it was that way, but in reality, all these really exist to be is well-optimized buckets for things that Google can crawl and then serve to display ads on. And we might get to do a few cool, you know, reviews or an investigative journalism every now and then. And that basically is how things have been working. But the problem is, as line go up increases, now, that previous example I had, well, why bother doing reviews? When you can just, say, do a review roundup article and then do an article based on the Steam score. 80-20 principle that. And then you start to realize, why can't we just train an AI to do all of this? and then hire an AI editor so that AI editor isn't sitting there, you know, writing it at 80 words per minute like some utter plebeian, when instead we can have a big happy robot. As an example, I've seen videos on YouTube being like, ah, look, you know, faceless AI generated YouTube shorts, how I develop 110 minutes. And you're like, cool. That could not be of good quality or worthwhile to people, but ultimately what you're just doing is flooding an algorithm with decently optimized things. This does not provide real value, people, but it is exactly what's going on, and it is exactly how we get to the likes of Glorbo. Remember Glorbo? When the Reddit started saying that Glorbo was a big new feature, and then the really shitty initial versions of these AI farm websites picked up Glorbo as if it was a real thing coming to Destiny 2 and World of Warcraft. Because ultimately, as our head writer and researcher puts it in today's report, ultimately it comes down to money generating within the ecosystem and within that context context, people are trying to make sure they can serve the audience. You have hardworking, well-meaning people trying to slip some value in every now and then when they can. So if you're confused why, say, a site like Eurogamer looks like this and um, when it's a rather unpleasant experience. So let, let's just have a look at Eurogamer. Uh, we have Super Mario Bros. Wonder, five stars, a, uh, you know, an honest must play VG 24-7 with a little uh, gameplay video here. Then we have Elephant Mario uh, sitting over there. Then, of course, we can also find out that it's Cyber Week with 80 
pounds off orders at Chill Blast. And then just above that, we see Cyber Monday, best deals 2023. Here are all the latest Cyber Monday gaming deals. Oh my God, look at this, everyone. You can get 100 AA batteries and absolute steal at 18 pounds, 92 pence. Is that not just a thrill? Now, um, uh, the main point here, there's no news in the front page of Eurogamer. Uh, the, yeah, that, that's basically it. I mean, the most that you basically get in terms of news is MW3 DG-58 loadout. So you get a gun loadout and a Fortnite Big Bang start time and also some Honkai stuff. Uh, so you basically get links to three news articles at every... I mean, this is ridiculous, right? Now, funnily enough, the browser that I use, Arc, um, it does have a built-in uh, ad blocker. And like, as an example, look, um, I, I subscribe to people on um, on Patreon. I uh, do actually use YouTube Premium. And uh, if you're like concerned, like, oh, does YouTube Premium just not like give YouTube money a month? Uh, no, actually, your view goes so much further to create a revenue on YouTube Premium than, um, yeah, than... Um, otherwise, right? Um, but like, even it means that if you're trying to view a website in a reasonable format, it's completely scuffed. And, you know, layout's all funny because at the end of the day, we all know what this whole uh, shindig is about. And look, as I scroll down here, you know, it wasn't even enough to just uh, to just know about these batteries. Here's what they look like. I mean, that is an impressive stack of batteries for, of course, the low, low price of £18.92. Drop a comment down below if you picked up this incredible steal during Cyber Monday. But yeah, that's basically the crazy situation that we're in, where this is what Eurogamer has to be reduced to in order to, number one, keep the lights on, and number two, for fill, you know, whatever expectations there are of corporate masters. Of course, corporate masters at the very top of today's video, you have learned are now, um, you know, getting rid of them. I do, however, have to give it some credit to uh, Tom Phillips, editor-in-chief. Editor's blog, Eurogamer owner seeking buyer, the Black Friday sale you didn't expect. Fair play. Well written. But that's just the kind of crazy situation that we we kind of ended up in that is only getting worse and worse and worse. And I think you guys have basically realized, like, it's getting to the point where it is quite frankly ridiculous. And as it's been getting more and more ridiculous, we've seen more sites be absolutely gutted by their corporate owners because even though it is so ridiculous and goofy as what we see, it is still not enough. And that is why we see the likes of Yahtzee and uh, Nick of Second Wind, why we have Aftermath, which is a bunch of ex Taku and Vice people. That's why we have started Bellular.Ghost.io as an example, um, because at the end of the day, it is way more healthy that way. And, uh, you know, in, in two or three years, I would ideally like us to sort of only really be just to be happy. We're like, yeah, we, we have revenue. We don't need to like worry about stuff. Everything's good. We don't need to play all of these silly modern games that kind of everybody is forced into because at the end of the day, everything is owned by various corporations and all the platforms that we do business on are also owned by various corporations, which by the way is why we went with Ghost as um, you know, as our, our host and sort of whole system because uh, they're open source and we could self-host if we wanted to. That said, they do a very good job of hosting and um, I don't no, networking computers can be kind of scary. Of course, then we got the likes of the people over at Geo Media who are actively closing sites when they basically just don't want to deal with them. You've got uh, the likes of gamers already wildly, you know, they wildly overspent during the pandemic. Now they're absolutely cutting their sites to the bone. I suppose this new ownership change, it's its at least got a slightly more optimistic, you know, slant to it. But again, I go to the very top of this and... Uh, you know, from, from Jake Ward, we pulled off an SEO heist and, uh, you know, it stole 3.6 million in total traffic from a competitor and they got this much in October alone. Here's how we did it. It is absolutely just another one of those annoying thread boys. Uh, I don't know what it is about thread boys, but anyway, not good. No bueno, no bueno. That's the way it's going. And that is why between what we're doing on our platform, the likes of Aftermath and stuff like that, and um, I, I think uh, now if we want quality, we are just going to have to go to specific places for that quality and support the quality that we want because evidently the big systems, while there were good days, I think they're basically beginning to run aground. And that is the point of today's video and this fun exploration we've had through the crumble and collapse of games media.